you ever misplaced your Android smartphone and thought, aha, time to use a tracking app or the manufacturer's website to find it? But then you realised that you never did get around to installing the app you had intended so many times to install or register it with the manufacturer's tracking service? Panic sets in. It's all over. Well, hold your horses. It goes, perhaps not. There are a few ways you can perhaps still find it and we're going to discuss some of them here. Did you know that you can actually use your Google account to track your phone? No? Well, you can. First of all, you're in state that this first technique will depend on several factors. For a start, your phone is going to have to be powered. It's also going to need an internet signal and will have to be logged onto your Google account or this one just won't work. Beyond that, it's simplicity itself. If you have access to a PC, simply log on to your Google account and type, where is my phone? If your device is associated with the account, you will see a map come up where Google will try to locate your phone. If it is successful, it will show the approximate location on the map and give you two options. To call the phone, useful if you've just lost it in the house or the building you're in, or to recover your phone. With the recovery option, you can remotely lock your phone, useful if it's at a location some distance away or you suspect it's stolen, and you can even leave a message on the lock screen. For example, this phone, this phone is, lost. is lost. Please, Please help give it back. back. It will then have a button on the screen to which you can allocate a number for it to call for a finder to get in touch with you. We will discuss the options that you have if the phone does not have an internet signal or is switched off shortly. But first of all, if you do suspect your phone has been stolen and wish to protect its data by wiping all that data from the phone, then this can be done by using what is known as the Android Device Manager. Just like the last method, your phone must be powered. It must have an internet signal and it must be logged onto your Google account. To start the Device Manager, launch a browser and log into your Google account. Then type in Android Device Manager and click on the Device Manager link. This will bring up this screen which will show you a large map and give you three options. Two of which we have seen before, ring and lock. So I won't go through them again. The third option is the one we are looking for here, the erase option. If you click on this, this window will pop up, warning of the effects of performing this operation. Basically, it will factory reset the phone and wipe off all the data on board. This is the time when you wish you had set it up to do routine backups. Read all the information, make sure you understand the consequences, and if you're sure, press that erase button. Now, what happens if you've lost your phone and it's either not logged onto Google, does not have an internet signal, or is switched off? Well, unfortunately at this point, it may only be the police who may be able to find it, but don't bother pestering them as they're not going to go to the expense just for a lost or stolen phone. There is a way to find out where the phone was before it lost its internet signal but it does need to have been logged on to Google and you need to have had its location function enabled. If this was active, you can find a history of where your phone has been by using Google Timeline and hopefully it's at the last location it reported. To use the timeline, log into your Google account on a browser on a PC or mobile phone and search for Google Timeline. Then click the Google Timeline link and you'll see the timeline page. Dismiss the Explore Your Timeline box and zoom into the map and Google will show you the routes you've travelled. You can use the options on the left hand side to select the exact time period or just select today and hopefully you can work out where you've been and track it down that way. If you've been using somebody else's PC or phone to do this, remember to remove your account after completion too. That's it for this tutorial, please like it if it's been of use for you and leave a comment below as to whether any of these methods have been successful. If you enjoy videos like this and retro gaming and technology videos then please consider subscribing. We have links to our popular Facebook group and Twitter where you can find like minded individuals and if you really like the channel then please consider a Patreon donation. Other than that it remains for me to say I hope it's been useful and thanks very much for watching. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs>